Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to another episode of Total War Arena. So, today we're going to have a bit of a special video today. Um, it's not going to be a particularly exciting video, but hopefully it's going to be quite useful to you. So we're going to be digging down uh, kind of into all the stats and analytics of the various units and kind of how body armor values work, how shield armor values work, and how that compares to melee weapon damage. Because it's kind of something that's very loosely explained by Wargaming but um, in Creative Assembly, but it hasn't really drilled down into any detail how it exactly works and how the different sort of formulas interact with each other. And while I don't necessarily have 100% uh, certainty about how it works, I, after I've been sort of looking at it quite a lot over these past couple of days, I think I sort of about got it pinned down. So hopefully we have a bit of a talk about that, sort of learn a bit how all these things work, and then we'll hop into a battle and see how sort of it applies. So I've been learning this mostly through the Roman Cavalry because they're kind of an interesting one because they have relatively low weapon damage but very high body armor values so it kind of is representative of you know a good unit to see how all these things work so hopefully we've all got our math heads on and let's get stuck in so um basically to eliminate the first couple of statistics melee attack and uh, melee defense and shield defense um are all basically relating around the chance to land hits so that's when you as a shoulder swings at an enemy um how likely is that to result in a hit on the enemy um, and we're not really looking at that today, so we can rule out them out. Um, basically, a higher melee attack means you're more likely to land a hit. But we're interested in uh, melee weapon damage and melee weapon penetration damage. So you can see um, our melee weapon damage is, what, 191 with, with the upgrades. We're not running any consumables at the moment. So 191 is our value to work with, and our penetration is 27. So um, that determines basically how much damage you're doing to the enemy. But to, you then got to take into account what the enemy's body armor is. So in our case, look, if we look, our body armor is 127 plus 30, so 167. Um, but we've also got to take into account our shield armor, which is 41. So that means our body armor is well over 200. You know, it's pretty much similar to that of an elephant. Um, so it's really high amounts of body armor. So we're over 200 body armor. So that means that, um, oops, wrong button. That means our melee weapon damage is actually lower than our total body armor value. So if we're fighting another unit of equites, um, the way the system works is the amount of damage you do is the melee weapon penetration damage plus the amount of weapon damage over and above the enemy's armor. So in our case, if we were fighting an equivalent unit of equites, then our weapon damage is lower than that armor value. So that means the only damage we do is the melee weapon penetration damage. You know, even if we ran a consumable, um, a weaponsmith, which gives us plus eight melee weapon damage, it's, it's going to do nothing. That, that that damage will not be applied in the slightest because our melee weapon penetration damage is still going to be lower than the armor. So the amount of damage we do per hit is going to be 27, whether we run a consumable or not. Of course, if you were then to fight, say, Falksmen who have got no armor at all, then you would do an extra eight damage on top of that. And interestingly, uh, this is where you have to really think about where your consumables are coming in. Because where it's only plus eight which might seem like a really insignificant amount when your value is, um, you know, 191. It seems like it's not a lot. But when that plus 8, when you're considering, it, when you're tipping around the body armor values, so if the enemy body armor is 180 um, and you're only going to be landing sort of 20, 30 points of damage, that plus 8 now takes it from 30 points of damage to 38 points of damage. So you can actually have like an almost quarter or almost up to a half percent increase in the amount of damage you can do with things like Weaponsmith. So it's not just you know, 3 or 4% increase in damage, it can be a lot more. Or in the case of where you're fighting something with very high body armor, it can be a lot less. And this is also true for things like your abilities, like vicious strikes, plus 10% melee weapon damage is a lot. That's going to give you, what, 17? Um, you know, it can almost double the amount of damage you're doing in certain circumstances. I mean, likewise as well, if you run things like extra body armor, the armor smith, a plus 8 is going to make it so your body armor is always going to be higher than anything's melee attack. I mean, if we look at um, so if we look at the gladiators, just as a premium unit of the same tier, their melee weapon damage is 225, quite a lot higher than the equities. So their weapon damage is going to be um, up and above your armor value probably. Although if you were running the armor smith consumable, you would probably get that down to about right. Which is why, if we look at say, let's flick over to say slingers, which have probably going to have quite a low, um, quite a low damage. Where are they? Levy slingers. Uh, so their weapon damage is only 125. See, that is is never ever going to get anywhere near penetrating your armor. Even if you're shooting in you in the back, um, it's still not going to penetrate your armor because obviously you'll lose the shield bonus from being shot in the back. So you know they're never going to be able to do enough damage to you. So the, the only damage they are going to be able to do is that of their missile weapon penetration, which in this case is five. Although I think it goes up 
up to 10, yeah, once they get the upgraded. So they're always going to, every hit is going to do 10 damage to you. And um, that's why if you're shooting Roman cavalry with archers, um, you'll find that you tend not to do a lot of damage. Because, I mean, if we look at, say, the tier 6 the Lesbos archers, then we'll see the well weapon damage. Again, it's just not going to cut it. But compare that to, say, uh, Barbarian cavalry, and we'll sort of see that I bet the Barbarian cavalry armour is sufficiently low. Um, yeah, it's only 112. So those archers which have got 125 base weapon damage, you know, plus the upgraded bow, which is probably going to give another 20, and maybe a consumable, which will give another 10, and you know, they're going to be rocking sort of 140, 150 damage. So every hit they're going to get is the base penetration, so which archers is about 15, plus the difference between the body armour and um, the amount of damage they do, which is going to be, what, like 40? So then when an archer shoots a, a barbarian cavalry, say the gun gun charges, they're going to do about 50 damage per hit compared to only that 15 damage per hit against Roman cavalry. And that's not even taking into account missile plot chance. So that's why I say these gun charges are extremely vulnerable to archers uh, because of the way the armor works. And there's little to no point in upgrading the armor value of these gun charges because you're so far behind on um, reducing the amount of damage. You take everything that's going to hit you, it's just going to do a disproportionately large amount of damage to you. Um, so it's something to bear in mind. But their melee weapon damage is actually pretty low as well. That's why they're just a terrible unit. <laughs> so hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview of kind of how these statistics work. Um, it's kind of hard to explain in some ways, but yeah. So, you know, you're always, always, no matter what, if you land a hit, you're always going to do some damage because the melee weapon penetration damage is always going to be there. Which is why, uh, let's do a good point to show, is why Falcsmen are effective or supposedly effective against um, heavily armoured units because even if their total damage is significantly lower than you know their melee weapon damage is only 166 so they're not actually going to be able to penetrate the armour of the Roman cavalry because the, the, their melee weapon damage isn't going to be sufficient but remember every hit takes into account the, the base damage on the penetration which is what 68 plus 29 high i'm not gonna try and work that out um you know you're gonna be doing 100 damage per hit no matter what the armor value of the enemy unit so you can see how that's a lot more effective and then you have to take into account um that when you're running consumables and things things like the extra melee weapon damage is actually not that useful because the melee weapon damage is pretty low and is largely going to be blocked by any of the infantry units if you're facing them from the front their armor and shield values although shield is ignored by falcsman their armor values are likely to be close to that uh, amount of weapon damage so really, increasing the penetration damage is the most important thing because it means that base damage is always going up and that penetration damage is always going to be applied no matter what unit you're fighting. So that kind of makes it a lot more useful and kind of fact should factor into when you're picking um, which weapons you want. You know, you've got a choice between two Falxers. The one really that does the extra penetration damage is that that's the damage that is going to be applied all the time to your unit when you're fighting. So it's kind of things that might... Uh, hope that's what I kind of wanted to make this video for is to kind of help you... Uh, perhaps pick what consumables you want um, and why they make a difference. I mean, it also it's kind of put a new light to me on things like, um, you know, some of the helmets where you get plus three body armor, where previously it seemed completely irrelevant of what's plus three body armor. But when you're teetering around that point of being able to get your armor value high enough to block almost all enemy damage other than their penetration, then actually an extra three kind of is worth it. And particularly when you start to get other tiers, like this um, one gives plus 12 body armor. It's actually a significant increase to body armor. So you know, there's quite a lot to play for when you're looking at these consumables. Sometimes helmets are actually going to be worth it because when you're teetering around that edge, the values that you're changing uh, have a much bigger percentage increase than you would think. Yes, so hopefully that was a bit of an interesting. Let's hop into a battle with these equities anyway. I think I've been talking for more than enough. Hopefully I'll remember to stick a little skip point. So if you don't want to listen to all that, you can just hop to the battle. But yes, I shall see you all in the battle. So we are loading into the battle of Rubicon. Looks like we've got pretty decent matchmaking. Um, so let's see how we get on with these guys. Yeah, one thing I didn't quite properly say, obviously, um, another point of this video I was going to make, yeah, obviously I was saying about the upgrades with the helmets and stuff, but some of the body armor upgrades on, for example, on these cavalry are a good example. You get like plus 25 body armor with um, some of the upgraded uh, sort of body armor, and that makes a huge difference. Plus 25 when these guys are already quite armored is what brings the, the body armor value on these guys just so high. Um, so hopefully, while this might not end up being a particularly great game, as we do it live, hopefully it's at least going to show how we don't take that much damage. That's what I kind of want to show with this video. As you can see, so we've got a 165 base body armor value and 41 shield armor. So we are rocking some serious defensive ability. Obviously we have a fairly good melee defense as well. But that's obviously determined, determining your hit chances and stuff like that. So, let's go over here. 
Um, I'm kind of tempted just to wander a unit near these slingers and maybe we can show how this works. If we go over this way. Maybe these guys might be inclined to shoot at me. Oh look, a nice easy target. Come on. You're right, they won't shoot at me now. There we go. So you should see, yeah, every hit causes, perfect, every hit causes 10 damage. Did you see that? Because, um, there we go, still doing a bit more. Every hit causes 10 damage because their, their uh, amount of damage they're doing is significantly lower than my body armor value. So they can only cause their penetration value damage, which is 10. Because I've obviously they must have got the upgraded sling. So that means they can only cause 10 damage per time. If we get engaged with these equites, which hopefully I will do, then I suspect we will only be causing, um, you know, uh, 27 damage because that is our armor value. Get those guys to charge in. Good job, guys. Um, let's go for just a, a war cry, just in case. Uh, hmm, not really a lot to get involved in on this way, is there? Just wandering. Um, so let's have a look at the hits in this battle, which is what we're trying to analyze. So, um, you should be able to see when I'm landing hits on them, what they're doing. Ah, so we're doing higher than them, so their body armor value must not be quite so good. It isn't their body armor, is only 135, so our damage is exceeding their body armor. So that's why we're doing, when we're landing hits on these enemies, we're not landing very many hits to show you, but we're doing significantly more than just 27, 98 there, look, 59, depending on if we hit the front or rear. But when we take hits, look, you see they're only 26, 27. Because they're not exceeding our body armor value. Oh, we're going to get capped out. Okay. Well, that did not go quite as I planned. But hopefully it actually gave you the idea which I was trying to do. Which was show you how those uh, different values work actually in the game. So it's not just statistics uh, you know, that have no meaning. They do actually affect the game um, properly. So just by the fact that was a terrible battle. <laughs> um... We'll, we'll go with it, we'll rock with that, because that kind of showed at least what I was trying to show you, which was the main point, which is the fact that the, fact that the slingers, for example, not exceeding the body armor value, meant that they only do that penetration damage, and because our weapon damage exceeded those unupgraded equites, um, then, you know, that obviously they didn't have the plus 25 body armor that, that we've got with the, um, the Augustan body armor, um, you know, meant that they couldn't do that much damage to us, they were only doing their base damage to us here, we were doing two or, or three times as much damage per hit to them so you know really though that just that, that this one or two upgrades how much of a difference that makes to the um, strength of these units compared to an unupgraded version of themselves because it's at that teetering point where the body armor is almost completely blocking the damage so by having just that little bit of an upgrade um, means that you can absolutely slaughter your counterparts so yeah so hopefully this has been uh, if not an enjoyable video an informative one at least Kind of gives you a bit of an idea now how these statistics work properly, at least in terms of weapon penetration and weapon damage, which was kind of the point of this video. So, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, finally, just a shout out. Thanks to Damien, who's supporting me on Patreon. Very much appreciated. And, uh, yes, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I shall see you all on the next video.